What's up guys and gals? Welcome back to Sunless Sea. I am so happy to have you here today, delicious viewer. If you don't know, just don't worry about it. Why are you delicious? I don't know. I don't know. That's what they call me in all the emails from this game and from Fallen London. So I assume we must all be especially tasty because somebody tried. I don't know. I always heard human being tasted like pork. That's what I'd always read. I don't know if it's true or not. Red, blue, green, whatever. So anyways, we can get into fights now if you wanted to. What you'll see is that once things are within our firing range, we can actually just like chill right here. We'd be like, bacow! And try and fight ourselves some bats. We're being attacked by a rather huge horde of bats right now. Wow, they got buffed, didn't they? I wasn't expecting to come into this combat and get like a severe case of battery committed against me, but you know what? Apparently that's what's gonna happen here today. Oh my god, we are battered like a chicken strip at Applebee's. My lord. I went to Apple C's one time. It was like Applebee's, just like the food was a grade lower. I don't know. It wasn't too bad. And so we actually lost a lot of hull right there. I wasn't expecting that. The bats used to not do anything. So apparently I've got like a little bit of a learning curve right here. The bats used to do one damage every time they hit you. Now they do five. So I guess they've had a 500% upgrade. Yikes. All right. Well, let's gather up the corpses. We gain terror, but we also gain supplies. So that's pretty cool. Note to self, stay away from bats. My guess is that they probably buffed them like that more than likely to keep people because people were up here farming bats for supplies. So I bet they nerfed it so that or I guess they made them stronger. I guess they buffed them to make, keep people from sitting up here and farming supplies nonstop. Still, that was not expected. That right there is a lifeberg, and you really, really, really don't want to go near that at this point in the game. Instead, I'm going to call all clear real fast. And we're going to stay along this shore. Unfortunately, I wasn't actually predicting we would take that much damage. So we may have a little bit of a problem here. Hopefully, he goes a different direction. Giant floating butt crack of ice. Just go that way. Get out of here, you bastard. It's basically a living ball of ice that hunts down your ship and tries to destroy it. And we cannot handle him right now. They were actually really, really easy to kill in the original combat system. But the game went from having like this weird turn-based combat system to having an active time one. Which I actually think was a positive choice. Changing the combat in this game made it probably like 200% better. Because the combat was the weakest point of the game before. Now the combat fits right in with the rest of it. We've now arrived at Andergard Harbor and Wither. And so we'll see what we can accomplish here a little bit disappointed about our hull kind of worried about the way that's gonna play out long term but I guess we'll just kind of have to keep our nose to the grindstone and hope that it all works out in the end inside of wither a chilly city beside a waste of salt behind the great arch over the bay the pale waste stretch white and silent as the face of the moon from here you might almost imagine they were snow north of the city the salt pools fizz with unlikely color Wither is a quiet, chilly town of gray stone and closed courtyards. The people are neither exactly unfriendly nor exactly hospitable. They have this irritating habit of answering a question with a question. And here and there, there are odd sights tucked away. Let's explore. An intriguing smell. Who will try? Who will buy? A street vendor turns skewers on a grill. The mixed scents are nothing like anything sold in London. So we can get a troglodyte prawn. We can try something mysterious or shredded jellyfish. Those both have a pretty low chance. I wouldn't go for anything like lower than a 50-50 unless you're really a gambler. Let's try the grilled troglodyte prawns. Huge and pale and their eyes stare bleakly into yours, but they smell fresh. Let's see here. Tangy and toothsome. Walk on chewing cheerfully. We lost five hunger and so we have a new total of 35, which means that we're fed. That's going to be all for right now. We lost terror and we gained some fragments. Apparently eating shrimp was a learning thing. I don't know. I guess we gained something about the world from eating a shrimp. I've had transcendent moments at the buffet. Don't judge me. Gather intelligence. The citizens of Wither enjoy questions so much so that they always answer a question with another question. It makes intelligence gathering very frustrating. Are you asking for any particular reason? At what time of day? Is that your hat? Might it be six? It could be six. Eventually you cobble together enough implication and supposition to compose a report. So there it is. The folk of Wither, I think we got that done, are sly and mystical, but subsist on cavefish and dust-burrowing beasts of the waste. Their beer, however, is ac- or I guess is adequate. We have a 75% chance if we drink the beer. It's 50 echoes to drink the beer? Hell no, that's way too expensive. Mm-mm. That's some of that, like, micro-brewed IPA shit, like out at Lagunitas. Who wants to pay $20 for a beer? Not I. Bring out the Coors. Whatever. I have no standards. Doesn't matter to me. Bring out the malt liquor in all honesty. I was talking to everybody. Nobody believes me when I say I like malt liquor. They're like, what? So if I bought you a tall boy of Mickey's right now, you would drink it? I'm like, hell yeah. That'd be like the highlight of my day. King Cobra, Mickey's, Steel Reserve. It doesn't matter. Bring it on. Oh, there's Codex right there. Okay, so we've unlocked another thing. A few more fragments. We don't necessarily... So we're not out of fuel. And we're not out of food. 
However, we don't want to make this too risky of an expedition, given the fact that bad things can rapidly happen in this game, and we lost half of our hull to a bunch of bats, and so that is quite absurd, but at the same time, I guess we just gotta live with what happened right there. The Isle of Codex, an Isle of Answers. Codex is a desperate cave full of mute exiles and an inexplicable colony of shivering, bad-tempered monkeys. We can compile a port report, but that's all that we can do. The exiles see many come and fewer leave. Some are given willing to, or some are even willing to communicate, but their gestures are unfamiliar, their meanings unclear. Even when you can understand, there are answers without questions, as useless as a key without a lock. You now have one port report from Codex. Okay, well that, I mean, it helps out a little bit. I think what we should probably do, it took us, I think, three fuel to get up here. We should just go out to the east a little ways. The other thing that we can do is we can press the Z key to send out a Z-Bat, and it's essentially a homing pigeon. It flies out and it looks for things that are around us. It goes in a big circle, and it reports on location so that you don't get lost at sea. It's one of those minor things that you probably want to use quite a lot while you play the game. We got the Chongyi Rift, okay. What's this little island over here? Let's find out. I'm also going to turn out the light in just a moment, but for right now I'm going to leave it. So do these not have names? Oh good, we got a light right there too. Is this perhaps Port Palmerston up here? Because we really, really, really need to find Port Palmerston. If we can't find that or Mount whatever. I don't know, there's a couple locations in the game that you really want to know the location of and until you find them, the game is going to be quite difficult. Still, that's some kind of lighthouse, the Ragged Crow. Oh, okay. So we probably want to be careful about this. Terror's not too high. So what I would suggest is let's send out the Z-Bat, we'll see what he sees. I guess we'll hear what he sees since bats, you know, they chitter or whatever. We'll head south a little ways and see what we can locate down here. We've got the Elifoss Abyss. Okay, if you're wondering where I'm seeing that, it's down in the bottom left-hand corner when we're discovering things. Every time you hear that typewriter noise, we should be able to keep our terror low, though, if we could just jump in between these islands. So while we might not be exploring and finding, like, the most useful things, where is our chart? So Palmerston is out this way more than likely. If we can't find it, it's going to be an issue. I think we'll have to watch out for that, but it can't be helped. I, I would like to find it now rather than later. But sometimes you can't always get what you desire in this game. So since things move around, it can be a little bit of a crapshoot trying to figure out just where things are situated. Especially the really, really important things. For example, like Mount whatever and Port Palmerston and all those things. Very, very difficult to find. But once you have them, the game gets a lot easier. Supplies and fuel are still looking okay. Let's send out the Z-Bat to see if we can find anything down here. Got a little bit of smoke down to the south. Pigmoat Isle is some distance to the southeast. Okay, I don't know if I want to do Pigmoat Isle just yet. However, Pigmoat Isle does give us an opportunity to do some pretty cool stuff if we want to. We got ourselves a big ass crab over there. Not to say that it's a crab on your ass, but it's a big, big crab that will wreck up our ship if we're not careful. It looks like our terror is actually going up pretty rapidly, even for having our light on, which is a little bit worrisome. We're not going to go to Pigmoat Isle just yet. Because there's an event there that requires a little bit of skill. Skill that we don't have at this point. It's got to be the fog bank, I think, that makes the terror go up that rapidly. Well, else it's going to go up that fast anyways, we might as well kill off the lamp and just be like, whatever. Lick a monkey crag. There's got to be a story behind that place. There is absolutely no way that there's not an interesting story behind the way that place was named. Our terror is still pretty low, and so long as you can keep it below 50, you should be perfectly fine. It'll go down once we go back to London. It'll actually decrease itself. What is that right there? What is that? It's a, Cal a Murgatroyd Caligo class cruiser. Okay, so I don't want to mess with him right now. Definitely want to avoid fights in this game. Seriously, don't do it. Resist the urge. Resist the urge. You're going to want to fight everything. If you're anything like me, you've got to wait on that. You can't do it at the beginning. Let's get the lights back on. We've got the shore within sight. Fuel is looking okay. We've got Horniman Stag over there. Tana Chook, we found our way back. We've got an Auroral Megalops right there. I don't know if this is a good plan. But I'm going to give it a go. Oh, good, we got him. Cool. And so we can butcher it for supplies. That means that we'll get a whole bunch of our hunger back. Or we can dissect it for knowledge. Because I don't really, it's 75, you only get like one page or something like that when you do it, so whatever, we'll butcher it. 
And so we lost 4,400. It actually resets your meter. Very, very useful thing to do if you've actually found yourself without anything to eat. And the crew is starting to look more and more delicious by the second. That's right, cannibalism is a part of this game. So just be aware that if you wanted to get your human eatery on, you can do that within the confines of the game. We'll sound the all clear for right now. Although that's sort of a relative term out here, isn't it? We'll continue our sailing back home towards port. I think we're going to go back to London for right now. I think that's our first plan. And so in going back to London at this point, we've sort of got ourselves kind of a weird situation because we need to find a couple of very important locations. And until we find those, it's a little bit precarious. We may die due to an event. So there's an event that happens when we first go back to London here. And you're obliged to take that event and to gamble with it. And if you haven't found... Port Palmerston or Mount whatever just yet it can be a dangerous prospect so anyways we'll head back this way how many secrets do I have right now out of curiosity let me go to my hold real fast go to the gazetteer we go to our hold it looks like I have three secrets at the moment okay the root of all good really secrets are the root of all good huh I thought that money was the root of all evil but I never thought that just like intangible secrets I guess they're valuable so whatever we'll go back to London that should allow us I'm gonna turn out the lights since we're right up close and our horror is nowhere near high enough to be worried hunger is a little bit high fuel is a little bit our canister is a little bit low that's okay I like to keep my canister filled that's a metaphor for life I like to keep it brim to the top it is what it is we'll sail back to the left of the Wolfstack docks life should be good over here once we get going but this game kinda has like a ramp up period I guess where you just gotta stick with it until you get to the point that you want. We'll dock here in London. And so her Enduring Majesty's Custom Service works closely with both the Ministry of Public Decency and the Masters of the Bazaar. Today they have selected you for an inspection. Don't cheek them. And so you have nothing to hide. We can either just like get kind of grumpy about it. We can go through and we can bribe, but we don't have anything to risk. So what I'm gonna do for right now is we don't have any mirror catch boxes. We don't have any souls. We don't have anything illegal, so we should be fine. Nothing to hide there. And so, they roam your deck like wolves, they tear through your belongings like termites, and at last, they leave. I don't think of termites as tearing, I think of them as more as crunching, and sort of just like chiseling away in a microscopic sense, but I guess that works. So we've got messages from the Harbor Master. Time does go by while you play this game, and so if you pay attention down here, you can actually see what day it is. We actually go day by day, and there is a time scale, like a calendar for the game. Events will change, and the availability of those events will change based on what day it is. And so when you're working on things that might have a limited, I guess, a limited shelf life, you probably want to hustle those out real fast before they rot on you. So anyways, all the clatter and song of the dockside, it soothes the soul. Are there messages for you? And so that's all for now. We have one another day of free evening. All right, something has changed in the neat. That's how you know that actually something in the world is now different than it was before. We've got somebody that wants to sign on. And we've got options now. And so we're going to go ahead and talk with the blind bruiser. A very fine evening to you, Captain. My what you might call mentor is very fond of adventurous Z captains, and he would like to offer you what you might call a dispensation, on account of he is so fond of Z captains. Behind the blind bruiser on the dock stands a dray piled high with fuel and supplies, so we can basically get a bunch of free stuff right here, but it's going to cost us something later on. Who is this patron? Is there a catch? He runs a very fine and very liberal establishment just across the river that is much patronized by zailers and men of wit and vinegar, a public house. And there is no obligation to speak of. My patron would hope only that you might remember him kindly, and I suppose that if the opportunity should arise for you to return his kindness, then I do not imagine he would refuse your offer. All right, so I'll take the 15 points. There it is. I'll take the dispensation. And so, we now have one menaces, suspicion. Well, my patron hopes that you find these little gifts to your liking, and he expects that perhaps someday you might choose to call on him at the Medusa's head. Should that day come... He will make, or we will make a very welcome, or we will make you a very welcome, and give you any safe conduct you might require. Good evening to you. So we got 10 fuel for free, which is quite a lot of money's worth, and we got 5 supplies for free. This is a pretty good gamble to take. Now, what happens is, well, I won't spoil it. Anyways, we've got a merchant adventurer here. I have need of a reliable agent, failing that an inventive one. Here are my requirements. An opportunity for profit. He has very specific needs, but he'll pay better than market rates, and he won't ask how you came by them. So he wants something savage or something bright. The something savage is seven hunting trophies. That's quite a lot, and so we get 500 echoes for seven pieces. I think they sell for like 25, so that's a pretty good price right there. Something bright. And so if we can get Scintillac and bring that back, Scintillac... 
I forget exactly what Scintillac is, but it's like this shiny gemstone that everybody wants for some reason. Like when you stare into it or something like that, it gives you dreams or, I don't know, it does something weird. It's a very, very odd item, but everybody wants it. And so seven Scintillac might be hard to come by. Port Cecil in the, or in the Principles of Coral, it's usually northeast or thereabouts. That's where the Scintillac comes from. Around 1,000 Echoes for seven. Okay. What do they cost normally if I sold them up in here? Let's see. They sell for 70. And so how many did he want? Let's go back real fast. So normally you get 490 out of it. That's actually a really, really good price. Okay. So anyways, what we need to do right now is we actually need to get ourselves admitted to the university. And so let's go back to London. We're going to go to our lodgings. And as always, we should probably take a look around and see... Well, it looks like we actually don't have... Let's go with a restful night real fast. You never know when you need a... Actually, I don't think we need a restful night right now. So what you can do is you can sleep. And if you sleep, you get a thing called a restful night. The restful night can then be traded in to save you from, like, night terrors and things like that. It's kind of useful to have one in your back pocket. You really want to think about this game in terms of, like, night... I'm sorry. You want to think about this in terms of, like, Magic the Gathering or, like, other adventure-related games like Descent. Where sometimes it's nice to have, like, that ace in the hole that you can pull out when things get rough. Let's go to London, and we'll visit the Admiralty Survey Office. We'll drop off some of our port reports. So, Hunter's Keep. We got one fuel, and we got five echoes. For Vendor Blight, we got what looks like a favor. We got ten echoes and one fuel. Very, very nice. In Wither, we got a free fuel. And then we went ahead, and we got ourselves twenty echoes. And in Codex, we got ourselves 20 Echoes and one extra fuel. And so our star is rising. We're making a little bit of money. Not a whole lot for right now, but this number will get larger. We're not going to be able to buy the really, really good stuff until we're into the 15 to 20 thousands. So we want to take this slow, but we also want to make sure that we're always advancing. The extra fuel will help. The first time you discover a location and bring it back to the Admiralty, you get a freebie fuel. It will make your life easier, especially since our next voyage is going to take us far, far away from home for a very, very long time. And so the next thing we need to do is let's take a look at our whole how full up are we? We're at 29 out of 40. And I want to go up. We'll go with the provisioners. We want to take this up to maybe 20 fuel. We want to take that up to maybe 15 supplies. Maybe 14, 15. Once we have those, we want to go to London. And we want to go to the university. And so the university has an inexhaustible appetite for secrets, these specimens, and other tidbits of esoteric lore. Provide a secret to prove yourself worthy of entry. And so we'll do that. We'll give up one of our secrets to get in here. That's important because now you can basically trade just about any rare item in the game for a cash payout. This place is very important and it's well worth the secret. And so, oh yes, the university's maritime liaison whispers breathily. Oh yes, this is quite a tasty one. Let me explain it to you. He or she explains, teeth glinting. The alarming scholar is mercurial, to say the least, a creature of sudden moods and provoking teeth. Possibly her, is it her appointment at as University Maritime Liaison was precautionary to keep his, or is it his, razor-sharp enthusiasm for causing too many injuries in the faculty. Ah, yes, the scholar whispers breathily, I have a budget for acquisitions. What have you brought me? I'm going to trade in the outlandish artifact for right now for a big infusion of cash. Some people would advise against this, but I'm going to do it. And so there it is. That's going to give us 100 echoes. That'll actually, I thought that gave you more money. We have something like that, he, she declares, but not very like that. Interesting. I have some ideas about the suitable fees. And so Favors Antiquarian is on the rise. We lost our outlandish artifact and we got 100 echoes. So that's pretty good right there. It's something to keep us afloat. And that's really what you got to worry about. So, before we go any further, let's go ahead and leave. We can put our ship in the dry dock. Getting some repairs might be a good idea. However, it's going to be expensive. And so, we've got 100 Echoes. We can repair things all the way back up to full. Or, we can go to the Admiralty Yard. Let's see here. It's unlocked with favors. You need three in order to make this work, but it's cheaper. Let's do it. And so that put us back up to 75. Now, I don't like using up my favors like that, but there isn't really a whole lot else you can use them on, so meh, maybe. As of right now, we also have somebody that wanted to join up with us, as I recall. So if we go to London, there's a new recruit right here. We can get the genial, what does he cost? 50, we have the genial magician. Good afternoon, Captain. Perhaps I could do your engine some good. No? <laughs> I'm quite the engineer. Difficult to credit, isn't it? But here are my references. And so he increases our veils and our mirrors. By how much it doesn't quite say, we can get a tireless mechanic. 
Unlock with no more than zero tireless mechanic. Afternoon, I'm ready to offer my services. I'm an engineer, the finest you'll ever hire. I treat the engines like my own children. Now that I have children, but too busy, usually busy. I'll probably take him. I think he's got a really, really unlocked with another day. See, I don't know who we should go with here. I think we have to pick between the two. I think they actually drop them both on you at the same time, and it gives you a different storyline arc. Let's engage this officer right here. Obviously, I'm ready for marriage, so we'll, we'll start up our engagement. And so there it is. We'll get the tireless mechanic. Afternoon. A spot of rust, spot of rust. Soon to see to that. You there. Help me with this spot of rust. And so we can actually appoint this officer now. So what we want to do is we want to go to our whole... No, we want to go to our officer's menu. We'll take him and we'll put him in the chief engineer slot. He gave us eight bales, so you'll see that that number has adjusted itself. And he makes us more fuel efficient, so 5% more fuel efficient. Pretty cool stuff right there. Make us go a little bit slower when it comes to the ticky, ticky, ticky of losing fuel. For right now, I don't see too many reasons for us to stay in port... So what we need to do is we need to go south, we need to hit all the stuff to the south, then we're going to go northeast super hard, and we're going to hope that nothing bad happens along the way. Sound like a plan? Let's clasp hands then, man, and let's get the hell on out of here. It's time for us to fly along. Let's turn off the lights while we're in the harbor, because I don't see any reason for us to have them on. I should probably get news while I'm here. Did I get news? I don't think I got news while I was here. Let me go back and we'll get... Do I have recent news? Hold on here. In my hold... We have recent news. Okay, so that explains why we weren't able to... You, let me sound the all clear. I'm hitting the wrong buttons right now. Disabled the tutorial. Alright, and it's time to venture very, very far from home. We can gather port reports that we've already had, by the way, in case you were wondering. That is something that's available to us. For right now, I'm going to head to the southeast. We're going to hit everything that's kind of... Let me go and I'll show you on the map right now. Produce the charts! And so we're going to hit everything over here. And then from this region, we're going to cut northeast hard, and we're going to try and clear out this area as well. I love the way that you can kind of tell, like, where you went right there just by looking at the map. I love the way that the fog of war clears out. I don't know. It's different in this game. It clears out by little squares. But as we sail, so what I need to do for right now is we're actually going to stop at a little port right here. That's probably where I'll break off the episode anyways. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me at the Nerd Castle for the next episode of Sunless Sea. I look forward to seeing you all in the next episode. Hi, do, and I will see you there next time, delicious viewer.